We sailed from our home port in Annapolis to Tillman Island on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay. There we entered a channel called Knapp's Narrows. That's a shortcut when heading east on the bay to Oxford. After a lively sail with 20 knots of wind, we tied up to the floating transient dock at the Knapp's Narrows Marina and then just in front of us stood the Bascule Bridge that spans the Knapp's Narrows Channel and allows Route 33, or Tillman Island Road, to pass over it. But what is a Bath School Bridge anyway? Well, it's a type of drawbridge, which was a good thing because we needed it to open if we were to continue on to Oxford, Maryland. The name Bath School comes from French, which refers to a seesaw or rocker. There are different types of Bath Schools. But this one is a rolling lift trunnion type, and you'll see why. Leaf spans the opening. The counterweight does most of the work to open the leaf with the help of gravity. The trunnion is the pivot point of the opening bridge, and with the rocker, it allows the bridge to roll back on itself. The bridge is operated by a bridge tender who sits in a small house that has a commanding view of not only the channel, but the roadway too. Here you can see the machinery that opens the bridge, and if it seems too small for the job, that's because the bridge is balanced using the counterweight high up at the other end. Shafts go from the electric motor and gear section to the trunnions on each side, which roll on a straight gear track. The opening process starts with warning bells and lights, which puts a halt to all vehicle and pedestrian traffic as well. You don't want to be caught walking on the bridge when it starts to lift. Here you can see the relatively small geared trunnion rolling back on the gear track, moving the pivot point back and allowing the opening part of the bridge to roll on its rocker. As the bridge rolls back, you can get a better idea of how massive the counterweight really is. The bridge continues to open until it's almost vertical, but not quite. At its maximum opening, the only truly clear space is to one side, an important point for sailboats with high mast. When passing through, it's important to keep the mast in this area, something that we'll need to do the next morning. While the bridge goes down, you can see a better view of the rocker and the sprockets that fit into the holes. There are many different types of bascule bridges in and around the Chesapeake, with hundreds around the world. The next morning, it was our turn to pass through the Naps Narrows Bridge. Narrows Bridge, that's Narrows Bridge, we go Vesper calling, over. Go ahead, Vesper. Yeah, Roger, sir, we are over here at the dock at the marina, just tied up, we're ready to go. If you want to keep that bridge open after we let the other boats through, can we come through, over? Yes, you can, uh, come through after they go through. Roger, sir, thank you very much, Chris. You're very welcome, thanks for this, Chris. Out on 13 standing by. The bridge was already opening when we were ready to go, but there was a sudden burst of traffic through Naps Narrows, which happens often, causing a bit of rocking as the local watermen's boats cruise by. As the last boat passed, we were on our way. This is where it's important to favor the open side of the bridge so that our mast, 50 feet off the water, will clear. Well, 
The eastern side of Knapp's Narrows has facilities belonging to the watermen or ones that are used by them to bring their catches in, which are mostly hard-shell blue crabs. Maybe it's stuck. By the way, at the time I made this uh, video, the price for a dozen hard shells on the bay was about $120. Shocking. The other side of the channel has a road nicely kept homes with docks. What a nice place to live. Finally, we made our way out of Knapps Narrows en route to Oxford, Maryland one of our favorite ports to visit on the bay. Thanks for watching.